Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Ashika Autofocus Motor. It's from about 1981. This was also known as the Five Star for the five different functions that they've managed to automate. The film load, focusing uh, using triangulation here, film advance, exposure, exposure with flash, some people call it kind of a Me Too camera after the uh, Nikon L35AF and the Canon AF35M, you know, autofocus point and shoots kind of from the same era. But uh, this came out two years before the Nikon, and the non motorized version of this came out a couple of years uh, before the Canon. So it wasn't really a Me Too, it was, Yashica was still a player then, and they were in the race with the big boys. They were still in it. It was before Kyocera bought them out. Uh, it's an autofocus viewfinder camera. It has a nice uh, kind of square in the middle of the viewfinder that shows you where the autofocus mark is. It's a 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. Uh, it's four elements in three groups. Goes from f2.8 to f16. It focuses from 1.1 meters to infinity. Has this focus distance indicator here, and I'll get to how you can actually use that. The shutter is fully automatic from 1 8th of a second to 1 500th of a second, giving it an EV range of 6 to 17. Um, the flash, they recommend 1.1 to 3 meters. At, AS, at ISO 100, they say it's guide number 12 in meters. Um, you set the film speed with a dial, which I have covered by this filter. Right here, this knurled ring, and then down here you set it. Goes from 25 to 400. Has a couple of cool features. Has a shutter lock, so if you have it in your bag or something like that, it won't accidentally fire. Um, like a lot of these early cameras, half press doesn't do the focus lock. Has a separate button to do the focus lock. So if you have you know two people in a scene, uh, but you want them both in it. You can focus lock on one of them and then recompose, hit the shutter button. It's a true lock. It gives you the distance and locks it until you hit the shutter button. So that's a good and bad thing. You don't have to hold this and reach for the shutter button. But once you've locked it, you've locked it and the only way to release it is to take the shot. It has a 9 second self timer using this lever right here. Uh, it seems silly, but it's helpful. There's a film wind indicator. Uh, it rotates. It's got this little red and white whirly gig when it's advancing and also when you're rewinding. Uh, very nice thing. Two AA batteries, so you can find batteries for it anywhere in the world. Uh, the flash will fire any time you popped it up. It doesn't automatically pop up. So that's kind of nice because you can do fill flash during daylight. There's a red light indicator in the viewfinder that lets you know when it recommends a flash. But if it's down, you can force it to a slow shutter speed. When it's up, it's always going to fire. Pretty bright. I really, really like this camera. The biggest problem I've had with it was getting it cleaned up, but thankfully the battery compartment was clean, the flash was down, and it had a UV filter on it, so the lens is in great shape. Uh, it took me three tries to get a good roll through it. It's not the camera's fault. The first one I was trying a new temperature controller, melted the emulsion right off the backing, the second one, uh, some old Kodak film, was about 25 years expired. It did some crazy color shifts, as you can see here. And then finally I loaded some fresh Fuji and got uh, some really, really nice shots. 
So I'll be uh, running a few more through this guy. It's a great one to toss in the glove compartment. You always have a good ready to go camera. So we'll uh, take the Yashik out for another spin and I'll see you then.